IonQ was the very first publicly traded quantum computing company to hit the stock market. And the bottom line is, quantum computing hopes to mark an exponential increase in the power of computers compared to existing technology that we commonly see today, which will undoubtedly unlock a bunch of new avenues in research and data analysis. And in this video, what I'd like to do is give you some realistic expectations of where quantum computing and IonQ can expect to go as we enter the year of 2022 and beyond. And I understand that some of my videos may come off as a bit hypey when I say things like IonQ is going to $100 a share, which I do still believe. Just by simply looking at the quantum computing industry, where it's headed, and how far ahead IonQ is from their competition. But like I said, this video is meant to give you a balanced perspective on the stock, as well as some of the risks, which I'm sure any investor or shareholder should be able to appreciate. And something that you have to understand with IonQ is that while the promises are tremendous, IonQ so far has little in the way of revenues to prove out the technology's commercial merits. One analyst from Goldman Sachs even expressed this thought in a recent research note. There is a high level of uncertainty around widespread adoption and commercialization of quantum computing and which forms of quantum computer ultimately captures market share. And the investor will need to see some more customers adopting quantum computing solutions into their workflows before companies like INQ will truly be de-risked from an investing standpoint. And while I do think this is a pretty reasonable note, Something I'd like to just point out here is yes, INQ is a risky stock, no doubt. But guess what? So were Tesla and Apple back in the day. If investors want to see stupid amounts of gains, that kind of money isn't made by investing in quote unquote safe companies. And don't get me wrong, those kinds of companies definitely have their place. I'm not disputing that at all. But when it comes to early disruptive technology companies, lots of risks need to be made if you want to see your 10 to 20x gains in a single stock. And while quantum computing is still an early industry, to put it bluntly, I think it would be stupid to assume that quantum computing will never make its way into the commercial industry on a large scale. This kind of adoption takes time. And while INQ is far from the only company involved in quantum computing, to the best of my knowledge, Rigetti is the only other publicly traded pure play so far. However, I think it's also important to note that other firms like IBM and Alphabet's Google are actively in the space, and I think it'd be fair to assume that more tech giants could easily enter this field as well. So as an investor, you might be asking, why go with IonQ stock at this stage of the quantum computing industry's development as opposed to the other companies that I mentioned? And to answer this, I'll let INQ's CEO, Peter Chapman, give his pitch from a recent conference call. Quantum computing is the next generation form of computation, similar to how a GPU differs from the CPU. There are several approaches to quantum computing. INQ's technology uses trapped ions for our qubits, or the quantum bits underlying our systems. We choose trapped ions because we believe they exhibit qualities. They're well suited for stability and their ability to scale. It can be hard to evaluate the relative merits of various quantum computing platforms in the market. However, the recent publication of the benchmarking study of all the commercially available quantum computers by the QEDC, a third party industry group confirmed that INQ's computers are best in class along key dimensions, such as their accuracy while running algorithms with high circuit width and circuit depth. INQ's hardware outperforms the field, outpacing entities from IBM, Honeywell, and Rigetti. Okay, so with that said, where is INQ headed in 2022? And I'm just gonna give a simple and blunt answer with no fluff. INQ is headed towards a lot of volatility. Given the early nature of INQ's business, the early state of this whole industry, and its SPAC roots, INQ stock is likely to be a roller coaster in 2022, to be honest. So, in other words, expect more of what we saw in quarter four of 2021. I mean, just over the past three months, INQ stock went from an opening $10 SPAC price down to about $7, and then all the way up to $32, before heading back down to the $16 ish price range. But why is this trade so volatile? 
Well, it's hard to use fundamental valuation metrics on a firm that in some ways more resembles an advanced university research project than commercial business at this point. And what I mean by this is, earlier this year, INQ boosted its outlook for contract bookings from 5 million to 15 million, which doesn't sound too bad, right? And in 2024, it anticipates hitting $60 million bookings. However, note that these bookings are not immediate sales, but rather the company anticipates them turning into revenue over a 36 month span. And I think this should give you a sense of the current small scale of INQ's present business. We could easily be well into the mid 2020s and still have INQ in the sub $100 million per year revenue business. And if you're investing in this company today, you absolutely must have a long term view on the firm, its management, and the technology, of course. And near term revenues, let alone earnings or cash flow, won't really back up the valuation. The INQ investment case is almost entirely built on where quantum computing could be in 10 to 20 years from now, which is basically what a potential growth stock is, right? And people who believe in the quantum computing industry and its future point to a potential total addressable market in the tens or hundreds of billions of dollars. And I don't think they're wrong. If quantum computing succeeds at scale, it will improve industries in weather forecasting, big data analytics, and biotechnology research, just to name a few. And you also have to understand that quantum computing isn't an incremental improvement to existing technology, but the way I like to see it, as a complete exponential momentum of insane change. And given the scale of the potential improvement, it's pretty hard to forecast all the potential uses of quantum computing today. But I think the big question on a lot of skeptics' minds is whether it'll actually happen or not. And if so, whether IonQ will be the ultimate leader. And I'd also like to highlight the following risk factor from the company's prospects issued with its SPAC merger. IonQ has not produced a scalable quantum computer and faces significant barriers in its attempts to produce quantum computers. If IonQ cannot successfully overcome those barriers, its business will be negatively impacted and could fail. And SPAC investors might reflexively think back to past SPACs that promised investors the moon but didn't have the chops to back it up. Something like Nikola comes to mind. However, I wouldn't get too scared guys, because in my opinion, while I get where this perspective is coming from, I think it's honestly nothing but fear mongering and nonsense. In INQ's defense, its technology has already demonstrated success on a small scale and is starting to generate a bit of revenue. The keyword here, however, is scalability. While I personally believe that INQ will succeed at scale, objectively speaking, it's unclear if INQ's technology will work on a larger footprint and find adequate market demand to make this multi-billion dollar business that they're promising. For quantum computing to succeed on a large scale, INQ will have to lower the cost per qubit to price its systems competitively while greatly boosting the number of qubits in use. And don't get me wrong, the company acknowledges this risk factor, and I think investors should pay attention to developments on this front. It's good to watch the top line revenues and bookings and all, but also keep in mind that the quantum provider that can bring down pricing the quickest will have the major long term advantage, regardless of who gets the early lead. However, it usually tends to be the companies who already have the lead who end up lowering prices the quickest. Not always, of course. But I think it's just something to think about, since INQ does seem to have the lead here. And on the plus side, INQ's high quality backers and partners make me less concerned about the technology part of the equation, despite all the risk factors that I mentioned. So, given this amount of information, do I still think INQ is a buy right now? And while I'm not a financial advisor, what I'm personally doing is waiting for the stock to hit around or below the $10 price range before I start buying more shares again. Long term though, I think a few dollars off INQ's current share price probably isn't going to matter that much anyway, but if you're looking for the best possible deal with this stock, I think it's currently better to wait. Just my opinion though. But yeah guys, I think that'll do it for the video today. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll catch you next time.